Argo Funk Book Review, Argo Funk Book Review. The Christmas Pig is a children's fantasy book by J.K. Rowling, first published in 2021. Jack is a six-year-old boy. His whole life, he's had a stuffed animal called Dur Pig. He loves Dur Pig dearly. Jack's life has changed when his parents get divorced and he's forced to move. At his new school, they pair older students with younger students in a buddy program. An 11-year-old named Holly McCauley... That's an awesome name, by the way. Holly McCauley. Merry Christmas. Holly McCauley chooses Jack as her buddy. She's a famous gymnast who's been on TV. Holly's nice until she gets her Hogwarts letter. I mean, Holly's parents get divorced... When her dad marries Jack's mom, Holly morphs from cool big friend to evil stepsister. She's always complaining and starting fights. Things escalate to the point where she purposely throws Jack's stuffed pig out the window of a car. They get him a replacement pig named Christmas Pig, but Jack hates it. He wants Durr Pig back. This is the point where the book transitions into a fantasy novel. I think it waited too long before starting the magic stuff. If this book was made into a TV special, they'd probably remove half of part one by starting with Jack and Holly as step-siblings. Everything in Jack's room comes alive on Christmas Eve. They argue about Dur Pig, who is now in the mystical land of the lost. Christmas Pig offers to take Jack there. As the cover shows, Jack has shrunk to toy size, Jack and Christmas Pig go through a portal inside a Christmas tree. The first area of the Land of the Lost is a giant warehouse called Mislaid. All the items here are in the process of being sorted. They complain about being lost by forgetful owners, and they complain about being sorted improperly. For example, I play dollies with my daughter. Dolly would argue that makes her an adult toy, not a kid's toy. The fact that this world even exists is kind of scary. I put Dolly aside for five minutes and she sucked into a portal with a bunch of trash? I don't like that! Poor Dolly. After an hour, a mislaid item is considered properly lost, and it is moved on to another area. A bunny toy tries to cheat the system. He's punished by being sent to the cruel leader of this world, a monster known as the Loser. I know he's called the loser because he loses things, and it's the land of the lost. Still, that name is kind of funny. He's a loser. Jack and Christmas Pig rush to the next area, which is a Wild West town named Disposable. It's run by Sheriff Woody. I mean, Sheriff Scissors. Now that I mention it, this book is sort of like Toy Story, except instead of toys... The living objects are ordinary things, like keys and slippers. Dur Pig isn't here, so Jack and Christmas Pig hide inside a lunchbox, which is being moved. They end up in a town called Bother It's Gone, for the more beloved lost items. An address book gives a tour, which is interrupted by Mayor Cheese Grater. He leads a citywide search for Jack and Christmas Pig. They're almost caught by a boot, but the boot's owner finds it at the perfect moment. The boot ascends to the sky, back into the real world. Jack and Christmas Pig are helped out of the city by pretense and a poem. I suppose that's better than a pretentious poem. A compass guides them across the wasteland of the unlamented. That's filled with lost things nobody wants, such as bad habits and Holly's anger towards Jack. There are also things that don't deserve to be here, like the blue bunny and erect Christmas ornament. The monstrous loser attacks the crowd. He takes several items back to his cave. That's another issue with the book. It's a long time before the villain first appears. The third town is the City of the Mist, which is mostly filled with intangible concepts, like talents, happiness, and beauty. The government is run by ambition and power. They should not be in charge. They quickly betray Jack and Christmas Pig. Fortunately, our heroes are saved by Hope. She flies them across an ocean to the final area, the Island of the Beloved. 
It's where all the most loved lost items live. Jack is happily reunited with Durpig. Bad news. The rules say Jack can only take one item back to the real world. Jack is touched to learn that Christmas Pig was planning to sacrifice himself all along. Jack changes his mind and decides to save Christmas Pig instead of Durpig. Luckily, Santa Claus is here. He drops off Jack at the loser's lair. The loser taunts Christmas Pig and all the other things he's captured. Jack talks to the things, and he gives them hope that they'll be found. A massive portal appears above them. All of the lost things are sucked up into it, including Jack and Christmas Pig. Jack wakes up underneath the Christmas tree. He's back to his normal size. His relieved mum says the family thought Jack was lost, and they were looking everywhere for him. He tells them about his adventure, and they have a Merry Christmas. The End Postbook follow-up? The illustrations to this book are fantastic. I like them better than the story. The story isn't bad, but I think it'd be improved if it was 50 to 70 pages shorter. Most of the book is spent exploring the land of the lost and meeting different lost items. At first, it's creative and interesting. Like, of course people lose their keys all the time. Towards the end, the idea wears a little thin. After you've met 20 lost items across four different areas, the novelty wears off. I think the names of the various areas should be changed. All the characters have the hierarchy memorized, but even after reading the book twice, I still can't tell you which areas are better or worse just based on their names, Disposable, Surplus, Mislaid, and Missed. I think getting to the magic part as soon as possible would improve the book. Harry Potter didn't have to wait 12 chapters before starting with magic. In the book's defense, most of the chapters are short, 2-5 to five pages long. Still, part 1 is the longest part of the book, featuring many characters who don't reappear outside of the last chapter. The characters fit the story just fine. Jack is less developed than Christmas Pig, but that's because the story doesn't require Jack to do much besides be in constant awe over the magical world. Since Christmas Pig is secretly planning to sacrifice himself, he is required to be a jerk with a heart of gold. Overall, it's an okay Christmas book with themes about loss and acceptance. The way The Land of the Lost is set up reminds me of some of the sequences in the Land of Oz series. It's no Harry Potter, but I could definitely see this book finding an audience. At the same time, I'm not entirely surprised I heard nothing about this book from any of my book friends over the past two years. I give The Christmas Pig a 6 out of 10.